The film opens with Anna, a nurse tasked by a doctor to check on a patient named Solomon Edward. She's surprised to learn from the front desk nurse that the patient is in the ICU for just a bite wound. After a long shift, as Anna leaves Milwaukee County Hospital, she witnesses paramedics rushing for an emergency. Upon returning to her peaceful suburban neighborhood and her husband, Luis, they inadvertently overlook an emergency news bulletin and retire for the night. The next morning, a neighborhood girl named Vivian staggers into their bedroom, appearing zombified. Luis approaches her to investigate, only for Vivian to suddenly lunge and bite him on the neck. Anna swiftly locks Vivian out and tries to help Luis, who goes into shock and dies despite her frantic efforts. Anna unsuccessfully attempts to call 911 for help. Luis immediately reanimates as a zombie, chasing Anna into the bathroom. She escapes out the window, only to find her once peaceful neighborhood now plunged into chaos. She drives away in her car but crashes into a tree after a failed hijacking attempt, causing her to lose consciousness. The intro scene unfolds, depicting the chaos of riots and war in major cities, leading to the collapse of human civilization worldwide. Upon regaining consciousness, Anna encounters Police Sergeant Kenneth, a serious officer en route to Fort Pastor, a nearby U.S. Army base. They are joined by Michael, an electronic salesman, Andre, a small-time criminal, and his pregnant wife, Luda, who inform them that the road to the base is overrun by zombies. Deciding to seek refuge, they break into a nearby crossroads shopping mall. While scouring the mall for safety, Michael inadvertently attracts the attention of a zombie, who attacks him. The ensuing noise draws the attention of others, and amidst the chaos, a zombified mall security guard targets Luda. Kenneth wrestles with the zombie, but Anna ultimately manages to subdue it with her shotgun while Michael dispatches the other zombie using a broken wooden shaft. They are then confronted by three living guards CJ, Bart, and Terry who demand they surrender their weapons in exchange for refuge. As they watch news coverage of the riots, Luda requests to use the restroom, with Andre accompanying her. CJ assigns Terry to keep an eye on them. A sheriff, appearing on the news, recommends shooting the zombies in the head as an immediate means to stop them. In the restroom, it is revealed that Luda was scratched by the zombie mall guard. Michael and CJ devise a plan to barricade the mall and signal a rescue plane or helicopter that they are alive inside. After the group secures the mall, they head up to the mall's roof to dispose of bodies and paint SOS signs. There, they meet another survivor, Andy, who is stranded alone in his gun store, across the mall's zombie-infested parking lot. Andy spots a helicopter, and everyone begins waving their hands to attract its attention, but to no avail. CJ locks the others in a section of the mall for the night. The guards watch a man on TV blaming the current events on the sins of mankind and quoting, when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. The following day, Terry unlocks the shutter gate as Anna requests to use the washroom. Andre and Kenneth share a heartfelt conversation, during which Andre expresses his desire for a chance to change himself. A delivery truck carrying more survivors enters the lot, closely pursued by zombies. Despite CJ and Bart initially wanting to turn them away, they are overruled, disarmed, and locked in a holding cell. The newcomers include the elderly Glenn, the trampy Monica, the laborer Tucker, the unpleasant businessman Steve, the driver Norma, the bitten Frank and his teenage daughter Nicole, and an anonymous severely injured obese woman who is wheeled inside via a wheelbarrow. Shortly after, the obese woman dies. As Anna covers her with a cloth, the woman reanimates it and charges at her, forcing Anna to kill her by stabbing her in the eye with a metal poker. Anna theorizes with the group that the disease is transmitted through bites from infected individuals, citing her experience with Luis. Andre leaves to check on Luda, who has hidden her scratch from the group. They realize that Frank has been bitten and could pose a threat. Following a debate between Anna and Michael about what to do with the rapidly deteriorating Frank, he chooses to isolate himself and says goodbye to his daughter. Kenneth stays with Frank, allowing him every moment before he dies. Michael and Anna awkwardly reconcile, but their moment is interrupted by Kenneth's shotgun blast. As time passes, Kenneth and Andy form a friendship through messages on a whiteboard. Romance also blossoms between Anna and Michael, as well as between Nicole and Terry. Despite the distractions provided by the mall, the undead increasingly surround the refuge. During a gathering around a dining table, where they dine, drink, and share life experiences, the power suddenly goes out. Michael and Kenneth head to the parking garage to activate the emergency generator, taking CJ and Bart with them. There, they encounter a friendly, unharmed dog. 
Bart is suddenly jumped by a zombie and bitten, his screams draw the attention of more zombies which forces the group to flee. Eventually, Michael and Kenneth reach the generator compartment, with CJ joining them, while Bart is overwhelmed and killed by the zombies. As they hold off the zombies, the trio douses the horde in gasoline before CJ uses his lighter to set them ablaze, burning the pursuing zombies to death. Faced with the impending death of Luda, Andre sinks into denial and has his heavily pregnant and infected wife tied to a bed in the mall's children's store. As Luda goes into labor, she passes away and reanimates. Norma checks on the couple and discovers zombie Luda and the distraught Andre clutching a small bundle of blankets. Norma shoots Luda, causing Andre to completely snap. They exchange gunfire and both are killed. Anna arrives on the scene and opens the bundle to reveal a zombie baby, whom she promptly executes. At an impromptu memorial, Kenneth declares that anything is better than sitting around waiting to die. The remaining mall dwellers decide to fight their way to the local marina and use Steve's small yacht to reach an island in Lake Michigan. They modify two small shuttle buses from the parking garage, removing seats, welding on a snowplow, attaching metal bars and floodlights, stringing barbed wire, boarding up windows, and cutting slits for deploying weapons. They load chainsaws, propane tanks, and other supplies on board. Meanwhile, Andy is starving and too weak to join the escape or contribute ammunition. The mall survivors strap a pack of food on the dog and lower him into the parking lot in a sling. Surprisingly, the zombies show no interest in him. Unfortunately, while Chips makes it safely to the gun shop, a zombie spots the dog and gets inside, biting Andy. Distraught over Chips, Nicole takes the delivery truck and forces her way into the gun store, where the now zombified Andy traps her in a closet. Kenneth, Michael, CJ, Terry and Tucker gather their meager weapon supply and enter the sewers, with Steve assigned guard duty at their exit. They traverse the sewers and emerge on the road next to Andy's shop, where they fight through the zombie horde to reach the interior. Inside, they find zombified Andy banging on a closet door. Kenneth apologizes before shooting Andy in the head. They rescue Nicole and Chips, gather ammunition, and return to the mall. Using a detonated propane tank, they clear a path back to the sewers, but the zombies pursue CJ. Tucker falls in the sewer, breaking his legs. Despite CJ's desperate attempts to pull him to safety, he is attacked by the pursuing zombies, prompting CJ to mercifully shoot him dead. Due to Steve's negligence, the zombies force open the exit door, leaving them no choice but to evacuate them all. The survivors board the buses and plow through the parking lot, navigating through the zombie-infested city. Another propane bomb is used to clear a path through the massive horde. As Glenn attempts to dispatch a hitchhiking zombie clinging to the bus with a chainsaw, a sudden swerve causes the weapon to slash into Monica's shoulder. The resulting splatter of blood covers the windshield, leading driver Kenneth to lose control and crash. Glenn and Monica are killed, while Steve abandons Kenneth and Terry, flees the top of bus and gets attacked by the hitchhiking zombie. The occupants of the second bus pull over to pick up Kenneth and Terry before encountering the zombified Steve, whom Anna dispatches. After dealing with the zombie clinging to the bus, the group rushes back to the remaining bus just as a horde of zombies arrives. Anna narrowly makes it after taking the time to retrieve Steve's keys for his boat at the marina. After a brief struggle, they manage to break away and race to the marina dock, crashing the bus and making a dash for the boat. CJ holds off the pursuing zombies after signaling the others to escape. He eventually finds himself cornered in the bus and sacrifices himself by shooting a final propane tank, causing an explosion that engulfs the vehicle, the zombies, and himself. The rest of the group boards the boat, except for Michael, who reveals that he has been bitten while helping Anna. Disregarding Anna's pleas to help him, he chooses to stay behind, recognizing that his infection could endanger her and the others. As Anna and Michael bid farewell, Anna departs on the yacht with Kenneth, Nicole, Terry, and Chips. Anna watches stoically as Michael raises his pistol, places it under his chin, and a final gunshot echoes over the water. During the end credits, interspersed with video footage taken by Terry using a camera from the boat, the remaining survivors successfully reach an island, only to be ambushed by a swarm of zombies. As they attempt to retreat to the boat, the camera falls to the ground, blacking out and leaving their ultimate fate unknown. Thank you for watching the recap. If you enjoyed the video, Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel as we will be sharing more recaps like this.